Hello, my name is Frank Noé, and I will introduce to the Stochastic Normalizing Flows paper with Hao Wu and Jonas Kröhler. Stochastic Normalizing Flows is a generalization of the normalizing flow framework, and here we also allow stochasticity in the flow, so the inclusion of stochastic layers in the flow. Generative learning methods with exact likelihood, such as normalizing flows, are quite popular in machine learning. For example, they can be used in order to transform the latent space distribution in variational autoencoders, or they can be used to transform samples from a simple noise distribution on an image into samples from images that we are interested in, as in the GLOW paper. And in these machine learning applications, usually we have samples from our target distribution given, such as such images from a database of a celebrities' faces. And we then need to infer the probability distribution these samples lie on before being able to sample from it. So we also have a density estimation problem to solve. But sometimes we are also given the target density that we want to sample, for example, from an energy-based model. And this is very important in physics applications. So in physics applications in the last few years, it has become quite popular to use flows in order to sample energy-based models defined by the physics problem, such as sampling configurations of spin, spins on a lattice in spin systems, and configurations of atoms, atom positions in three-dimensional space in a molecule, or configurations of four-dimensional space-time in lattice quantum chromodynamics. And we are in the setting of normalizing flows here. So normalizing flows have an invertible neural network that they use in order to transform samples from a simple input or latent space distribution, for example a Gaussian, forward through the network to samples of the objects that we are interested in, such as images or molecules. And uh, these networks can also compute the inverse transformation from X to Z. And because of this invertibility, we can invoke the transformation of random variables theorem. So we can compute the probability density to generate the sample X, given the probability density to generate the input Z and the Jacobian, uh, the determinant of the Jacobian of the transformation. There is an extension to normalizing flows called Boltzmann generators, which basically train a flow to generate the probability distribution P of X to be similar than the reference distribution given by some energy-based model, for example, a physics model, such as the Boltzmann distribution of a given energy. And then we use a second step, a reweighting step, in which we use important sampling or Markov chain Monte Carlo in order to reweight this output distribution P of X to the exact target distribution. And in this way, we can draw samples from the target distribution without asymptotic bias. And that is very important in physics applications. Now, when we use invertible neural networks, we have certain restrictions because uh, we, we, are, we are restricted in the choice of the architecture. And that means there are certain things that are hard to represent. So one um, aspect that can be hard to represent is if we want to go from a unimodal probability density to a probability density with separated modes. So for example, with real NVP networks, it's very hard to separate the two without having this residual connection here. And uh, th these connections not only affect the representation uh, itself, so the, the, our ability to represent this density, but they also make the training very hard. Um, but if we use the same real NVP network and we just add in a few Metropolis Monte Carlo steps and train this as a stochastic normalizing flow, then we can separate these two modes very well and we can approximate the target density very well. So how can this work and especially how can we train such networks? Because as soon as we introduce stochasticity, of course we lose the exact invertibility of the flow and therefore we also lose the transformation of random variables. Okay, so let's see. Uh, first of all, let's formalize normalizing flows, so without stochasticity. So here we have a latent space distribution over C that is given as an input, for example, 
uh, the Gaussian distribution and we have a corresponding energy which can generate this distribution. So there's uh, e to the minus some energy um, up to a normalization constant is this distribution. Okay, um, so these are the z variables and then we have intermediate variables for the intermediate network activations that we call y and we have an output distribution p of x over x. We can also run the flow backward. So let's say we have sampled from probability distribution mu of x. Then we can push that backward through the flow and output samples from p of z. Now every layer in a normalizing flow is invertible. So we can compute y of t plus 1 from y of t by a forward transformation through this neural network layer. And we can also invert this layer in order to compute the reverse transformation. And then we can use the transformation of random variables theorem in order to compute expressions for the kullback leibler divergence between p of x and mu of x and p of z and mu of z. And we want to minimize these differences between p of x and mu of x and p of z and mu of z. That's the, that's the uh, purpose of training the flow. And if we do that with minimizing the kullback leibler divergence, then we end up at these results here. So that's the uh, expression for energy-based training. So that means uh, we have a model for the target energy. We sample from z, push forward through the network, and evaluate the likelihood in x. And with maximum likelihood training, we do the reverse. We have samples in x. And uh, we push backward through the network and maximize the likelihood in latent space. But if we introduce stochasticity, we can no longer use a uh, transformation of random variables. So we have to use a different approach to train the network. And an alternative formulation to get the same result is maximization of importance weights. So we can define these importance weights here, which are just a ratio of the exact density and the uh, density generated by the flow. And uh, they turn out to be just a difference between, so the, the log turns out to be just a difference between the energies in Z and X and these volume factors. And these volume factors or volume terms for deterministic normalizing flows are just the logs of the Jacobian determinants. So then by maximizing the importance weights, we get these simple expressions for the uh, loss functions. And it turns out that uh, this, these expressions are actually a generalization of what we had before. They also allow us to train uh, parameters in the prior. But if we consider the prior distribution fixed as usual, then these are actually identical loss functions. So up to a constant, this is an identical expression than what we had before. Okay, now, but this uh, approach allows us to talk about stochastic normalizing flows. So now we can generalize normalizing flows to stochastic normalizing flows. And there's not too much we have to do. So we have to generalize the concept of a flow layer. Of course, we can no longer in a deterministic setting compute yt plus 1 from yt, but we have to do it in a stochastic way now. So for um, every layer, there is a probability distribution that takes y of t and generates y of t plus 1. And for most uh, stochastic uh, uh, dynamics, so for example, for Markov chain Monte Carlo or Langevin dynamics, we can write down what this probability density is, uh, so we can get expressions for it. We can also keep the same expression for um, the importance weight, just that now for a given Z sample, x becomes a random variable. So x is no longer determined by choosing z, but there is a probabilistic pathway from z to x. And then finally, for uh, we have to generalize the concept of a Jacobian determinant, and that is replaced by the logarithm of this uh, of the ratio of path probability. So the backward path probability divided by the forward path probability. And with these generalizations we can now uh, use essentially the same expressions for the loss functions for energy-based training and maximum likelihood training. So the only difference is really that uh, for energy-based training we sample from latent space and then sample the entire forward pathway and maximize the, these weights. 
and for maximum likelihood training we just do it the reverse way. And so on one hand uh, these um, loss functions can be uh, proven or it can be proven that these are the correct loss functions um, by using arguments from non-equilibrium statistical mechanics and pathway probabilities or we can also use a variational bound because uh, the kullback leipler divergence between pathways is um, uh, a bound to the kullback leipler divergence between the probabilities of the marginal uh, variables x or z. Okay, in this paper we implement this idea by using annealed importance sampling. So we um, apply stochastic normalizing flows to examples where we have the target density given and that means we have the prior and the target density and we can interpolate them between them but we interpolate actually between the log density so that means between the energies and these intermediate energies will be used to to uh, sample in the stochastic layer so for example to do Markov chain Monte Carlo in this intermediate energy and um, this is called annealed importance sampling. Now the paper works out these volume ratios or volume terms for Langevin dynamics, Markov chain Monte Carlo, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, and also for deterministic flow layers. And for deterministic flow layers, actually, this volume term just turns out to be the log of the Jacobian determinant. So that means the stochastic normalizing flow is really a generalization of normalizing flows. Yeah, If you just leave out the stochastic layers, you're back to the normalizing flows and all the code stays otherwise exactly the same. And only for uh, the only thing you need to do on the code level is to implement different volume factors for these stochastic layers. Okay, so if we first illustrate how these stochastic normalizing flows work on uh, 2D benchmark systems. So these are samples from the exact density. They are just defined using 2D images, but they're 2D functions, probability functions. And uh, you can see that for a pure real NVP flow, it's really hard to approximate these densities. For example, the, uh, the, the Labrador here is approximated by a Scottish Terrier, so it's really, really hard to get these fine details right. But also for a pure metropolis Monte Carlo sampling, uh, if you restrict yourself to a fixed number of steps, it's uh, hard uh, to get the target density right, and this is more like a sampling problem. So here you stay close to the initial point of sampling, which is the, the center of the image. But now if you just combine this real NVP network and these Metropolis Monte Carlo layers into one network and train it as a stochastic normalizing flow, so you don't make it more complicated, not deeper, not wider, you just combine two networks that individually do not work, then you get a very nice approximation of the target density. And you can do the same instead of with real NVP layers, with neural spline flow layers. And again, the message is you take your deterministic flow, you add stochasticity, and uh, you get a better approximation of the target density. Of course, this is using neural spline flows with a fixed depth and width. So probably if you increase uh, uh, their capacity, you can better approximate the target density, but for any given deterministic flow layer, the quality improves if you add in stochasticity. We also use stochastic normalizing flows to sample configurations of molecules, here alanine dipeptide, and here we compare the probability distribution in certain marginals that are interested, interesting, so in the, in the distribution of certain torsion angles, and also the stochastic normalizing flows do much, much better than the deterministic flows here. And uh, we also show that you can use stochastic normalizing flows in order to reweigh to the exact target density. So you have a target density given that you're interested in sampling uh, without asymptotic bias. And because we can compute the probability weight, so the importance weight for every path sample, we can insert this into these reweighting equations or use it in a, in a Markov chain Monte Carlo framework. And then 
despite the fact that we cannot compute the marginal probability density p of x, we can still use a compute uh, importance weights for these path samples that will unbias our samples in x. And this works much better uh, for stochastic normalizing flows than for deterministic normalizing flows, no matter if you use real NVP or neural spline flow. So both the bias and the variance um, of uh, the target samples improves. And finally, we also use stochastic normalizing flows in order to uh, improve the variational bound of variational autoencoders compared to the naive implementation where we have a Gaussian in latent space the deterministic normalizing flow in latent space and just doing Metropolis Monte Carlo in latent space. And with this uh, ends my summary of stochastic normalizing flows. Thank you for your attention and see you soon in another lecture.